We are just hours away from the launch of the Pokemon Indigo Disc DLC, and I thought it would be great to recap all of the leaks that have thrown down leading up to the DLC. Massive spoiler warnings. Let's dive in and let's see if we can crack these codes for the Indigo Disc. All right, so throughout this leak season, Riddler Koo has been our primary source of information. This person is someone who has leaked tons of information about previous games, Legends Arceus, BDSP. It goes back quite a while. There's no reason to kind of refute what they're saying, but oftentimes they put these kind of teasers in little cryptic riddles and they can be a little tough to decipher. And then always when they reveal it later on, it's like, aha. But there's been a lot of information that we can gather from these posts and it can give us a lot of insight as to what to expect for this DLC. Hit that like button down below if you guys enjoy this type of video and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our epic Indigo Disc coverage right here. YouTube tells me a lot of you guys are not subscribed, so just take a moment and click that subscribe button for some awesome Pokemon videos. Now, Ku actually started posting some new stuff this morning, uh, which is always nice to see, so we kind of get some, some new teasers here. The first one being Entei with a character kind of riding on its back. This character is Homura Akemi, and uh, I was I did a little bit of Googling on uh, Hamura here. I didn't really come to any sort of conclusions, but a lot of people are thinking that this might be kind of hinting at what the name of Entei is gonna be. Some people are thinking it might be Gouging Pot Pyre or Gouging Flame. Um, you know, a lot of question marks there on the name. Some people are saying, oh, does this mean you could ride it? Well, Ku followed up with another post of Terrakion as well, and a character riding on top of the Terrakion and some people think that this might be related to its name, Iron Boulder, Iron Strike. There was some questions about who the guy on top was. Uh, not really uh, any clarity. It's supposed to be one of the NPCs from Pokemon, so it's a little unsure about that. So we're thinking that this might be hinting towards the names of these various legendaries, but we do know that we're getting a new Entei form and a new Terrakion form in the DLC that's been hinted at pretty heavily. We covered this a few times on the channel about the legendaries returning and shiny hunting them. The first time you can get Cubfu, Spectriere, and Glaciere, but Ku actually followed up this morning with another post saying, Game Freak, I'm not ready with a tear emoji and says, are you ready on the previous post back in November? This could lead us to believe that these are actually shiny locked, which would, you know, be pretty much in line with how things have gone lately, but it remains to be seen. So we know that we're gonna have an opportunity to get Cub Fu, Spectre, Glacier, some different legendaries that we haven't had an opportunity to get before, uh, at least in these games. The hope was that we could shiny hunt them. It'll be the first time they're outside of their normal events, but it seems like that may not be the case. I would hold out until we get data mining from that though, uh, just because it's a little unclear as usual, but that may actually mean that they're locked, which would be, I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel about that. We've got Kupos and the useless duo here with Briar and Carmine. Uh, basically indicating that they don't really have a significant part in the story. They, they're they not able to stop the climax of the story, which if you haven't been keeping up, basically, you know, based on Kieran's transformation, we'll talk about Kieran towards the end of this video, based on Kieran's transformation, he's gonna be kind of the uh, antagonist of part of the story. He's not gonna be the main story of the Blueberry Academy, but he's gonna be a part of the story that you can kind of venture off on. And, uh, you know, it seems as though no one's stopping him here. And speaking of Kieran and his Pokemon, he had the signature Pokemon Diplin in the Teal Mask DLC. There's a lot of reasons to believe that Diplin is going to evolve into a new Pokemon for the Indigo Disc. The, the primary indicator of that is the fact that Diplin uh, can, can hold an Eviolite currently. If you don't believe you can go into your game, give it an Eviolite, it'll actually boost its stats. That was something people kind of figured out. So they, they I think they intentionally left that in or maybe they forgot to scrub it, but they didn't patch it. So it's, it's in there. So that tells us that, you know, there's a very good chance that it's gonna evolve. We've gotten hints from the Riddler going way back months and months and months of kind of the fact that Diplin has two snakes inside of it, which is part of its lore, that's confirmed. And those two snakes are gonna kind of climb up the stick or the Caduceus staff and have multiple heads. And then we're kind of thinking that maybe lines it up with the Hydra a little bit. And then Ku started posting some more pictures about, um, you know, Hy Hydreigon and Volcarona and kind of fusing them together to indicate that we're gonna potentially be getting a bug dragon Hydra Apple Pokemon. So Hydraplin is what a lot of people are calling it at this point in time. But it does lead us to believe that there is a very big possibility that it's our first ever bug dragon. It contains a bunch of different heads. I don't know how many, maybe two, maybe it's a bunch. Um, and you know, maybe it utilizes some sort of, uh, you know, bug type strategies like trapping strategies with infestation or something like that. I think it's also worth noting here that there's been some rumors about this also being a poison type. 
uh, and, and having an effect that allows it to always be poison type in addition to its other typing. So that's been kind of a common theme. Uh, the Riddler also posted another picture of Alder and Kirin and, and uh, Getsis. Uh, with the different types of these Pokemon and again a lot of people are speculating that it is going to be bug and dragon But uh, that remains to be seen um, But on the topic of Kieran again, I kind of want to touch back on Kieran here We obviously saw that he has a new hairstyle in the indigo disc from the last trailer He's obviously done some some development. This was kind of predicted by Ku a while back uh, Which is funny on back on October Predicting his haircut, he obviously gets kind of a new hairstyle. But if you look, it seems as though he may have been overtaken by the Toxic Chain, uh, the Peachy Pokemon. The idea that there's this Pokemon that has influenced Okie Doki, Monkey Dory, and Fezzendipity. Some people are saying it might be called Peachy Kane or something like that. Or just the, the Doku, Taru, Peach Pokemon. And then, of course, there's the Peachy's kind of shop in the Teal Mask DLC. And she seemingly has that Pokemon laying there. So this is going to be really interesting to see how this all unfolds. But the speculation now is that Kieran is going to be kind of like taken over by this Peach Toxic Pokemon. It's going to make him kind of, you know, lust for power. And, uh, you know, I think it's also going to result in his, his signature Pokemon kind of coming to fruition. This, this Hydrablin, Hydra bug thing so it's really interesting I, i'm really excited to see how this goes and it seems as though this is going to be a side part of the indigo disc this is not like the primary story of the indigo disc so i'm actually really excited to see how this is going to unfold i'm very excited to see this new pokemon so a lot of cool stuff around that i think that there's uh some really interesting pieces to this puzzle the next main thing is terapagos and its ability and and this has been a topic of conversation on the channel about this 19th type, this 19th Terra type, this idea that Terrapagos is going to have multiple effects uh, or abilities. So it's going to start as the baby one, which is going to have a more defensive ability uh, that's going to prevent neutralizing gas. We're thinking that that's going to auto Terra it into kind of the main Terrapagos form that we know. Um, the reason for that is we've seen posts from Riddler that the baby little turtle is only really for Pokemon camp. It's not really uh, something in battle. It kind of transforms right away, it seems. So it's going to probably be sent out into the battle in the baby form, transform into the main form that we know from its effect. Uh, and then from there, it seems as though there's some sort of next stage of terrestrialization that's going to take place. And that might be its effect that it gives it this, this new typing um, of sorts. We saw, obviously, Ogre Pond has all sorts of terrestrialization kind of automatically happening built into its effects. We do know that these these uh you know these turtles have defensive abilities that seems to be the case it's going to be like a very defensive uh type ability um and then again tying it all back to this 19th type this this 19th terror type um which we're trying to figure out exactly what this is going to be the thought is you know from this post here it may be related to omni it may be all encompassing it may kind of fuse all of the types and bring all of that energy together much like the back of Terrapagos' shell, and it makes it so it you don't take any super effective damage from anything, and maybe you're not dealing super effective damage, but your damage output is buffed, so maybe just everything is neutral across the board, and you're just hitting harder, and you're taking less. Maybe maybe that's the idea uh, behind this, but the thought is that this Terra, this, this Omni type, this 19th Terra type, which in Japanese is apparently called Stellar, Terra type or something related to that, maybe celestial, maybe you know astral Terra, maybe cosmic Terra. There's a few thoughts about what that actual word is going to be, uh, based on the leaks. But it seems as though that th this this type is going to be able to be utilized by other Pokemon as well. This is going to be a, a kind of a all encompassing, uh, you know, ubiquitous game mechanic for at least the tail end of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. That's what that's what we're looking at right now. So some really interesting pieces and obviously not all of the puzzle is together just yet, but it's looking like obviously in, in you know, within hours, we're gonna be getting some of these answers and I'm super excited about it. So I hope I could see you hang out with us on our live stream at twitch.tv slash a drive. I'm gonna be having a fun, fun time just playing the game, dude. Honestly, I'm just excited. Like I feel like for so many years, I go into these launches with like all this pressure of like, I got to do this big marathon and all this. Dude, we're just going to vibe. We're going to have a good time and I'm excited about it. So hopefully I'll see you guys there. Let me know your thoughts. If you thought I missed anything in the comment section below, leave a like, make sure you guys subscribe and I will see you guys with more Indigo Disc coverage on the channel very soon. Peace.